Hi, I'm Heidi Markoff, and let's face it, parents and parents-to-be have put a lot of things on pause during the pandemic, from in-person baby showers and birthday parties to preschool and play dates, even visits from new grandparents eager to get their first snuggles. And as a grandmother, I know that that had to hurt. But one thing that also seemed to get paused were routine trips to the pediatrician for well baby visits and for childhood vaccines. Parents, of course, were understandably concerned, worried, nervous about taking their little ones to the doctor's office during a pandemic with all those germs going around. And the problem is that's concerning now because that's left a lot of little ones without the protection they need from childhood diseases. And that's okay because it's time to catch up. And to help us do that, we have Dr. Georgina Peacock, who is a pediatrician and the acting director for CDC's Immunization Services Division. And this is important for our What to Expect family. She's also a mom of four. So she understands vaccines from both a parent's perspective and an expert's perspective. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Peacock. So glad to be here with you. So first things first, aside from the flu and um, and the usual suspects, what, what diseases do vaccines protect against, uh, the routine vaccines? So childhood vaccines protect children from diseases such as chickenpox, rotavirus, measles, pneumococcal meningitis, and these diseases used to be really common in the United States, but now thanks to vaccines, illnesses from these diseases are really rare. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of parents wonder, why is it important for healthy children to get vaccines? I mean, after all, they're healthy, so... Right, well, so... So on-time vaccination throughout childhood is really important because it helps provide immunity before children are exposed to potentially life-threatening diseases. And we know that vaccines are tested to ensure that they're safe and effective um, for children to receive at the recommended ages. Now, there's a perception that childhood diseases are a thing in the past. Um, So many of us had, you know, didn't experience infections like polio or even measles. I got my MMR. Um, So why bother vaccinating kids from diseases that are so yesterday, like not relevant to us today? And I know from experience why why we should do that, because my three week old grandson was um, exposed to measles when he was hospitalized for sepsis. Um, It happened to be someone who was not vaccinated who uh, expose him to measles. Um, So I know, but those infections are still out there. Um, In many cases, they're just an airplane ride away. And especially now that we're back in circulation, going on airplanes, um, back in social uh, circulation, those infections might start uh, circulating again too. So give us your best case. Uh, for why we have to keep vaccinating kids against those diseases that many have not heard about or experienced. Well, I think your example was a perfect one, and there are other examples like that. Pertussis um, is something that circulates, and so that's why um, you heard before that we need to make sure that adults are also um, continuing those routine vaccinations. So really, vaccines are an incredibly important way to keep uh, children and our whole community safe. Here's another one that I hear. I'm breastfeeding my baby, so that gives my baby all the antibodies that she needs. Is that true? So breastfeeding is a very important way to protect against some infections um, as your baby's immune system is developing. So in breastfed babies, we know there's a lower risk for ear infections, for respiratory tract infections like the common cold and diarrhea. However, Breast milk doesn't protect children against all diseases. And even in breastfed infants, vaccines are the most effective way to prevent against many of these vaccine preventable diseases. Um, Here's another one uh, that I hear. Um, Aren't there other more natural ways to boost a child's immune system besides vaccines? 
So there are some other ways to boost the child's immune system. So babies uh, may get some temporary immunity or protection from mom during those last few weeks of pregnancy, but that's only for diseases to which the mom is immune. So, um, you know, again, that's why they need vaccines to strengthen their immune system. Vitamins, they can help uh, with some immune system systems. Uh, functions, but only vaccines can prevent uh, infectious diseases that once killed or harmed many infants, children, and adults in the United States. So these vaccine preventable diseases are what we're really targeting with those vaccinations. Absolutely. So a healthy diet is great. Add on. So is getting enough rest and activity and all those things that kids need. But the bottom line is you need that in addition to that extra layer of protection. And, you know, speaking of natural versus not so natural, a lot of parents worry about what's in vaccines and whether those are safe. Yeah. So we know that the, the vaccinations are uh, go through a lot of testing and they're safe and effective um, and uh, should be given in that recommended immunization schedule so that they're protected against all of those diseases. Okay, so let's say my child hasn't been to the pediatrician since the pandemic began. Um, what should you do at this point? So, it, you know, families were doing their part. They were staying home uh, make, to uh, stop the spread of COVID-19. And these missed checkups and missed uh, childhood vaccinations certainly occurred. So it's just really important now to get caught up on those. So get those missed uh, well visits um, and recommended vaccines as children are getting more out in the community again. It's a really it's really important to make sure that that's one of the things that happens uh, sooner rather than later. So why is it important to stick to a schedule for childhood vaccines? So we know um, that the vaccines don't overload your immune system. And so it's important to get those vaccines at the time that they're scheduled, because if you don't, or if uh, you may miss out on a vaccine and get exposed to that disease before you've had the recommended vaccine. So we don't know of any benefits to delaying or prolonging um, the vaccine schedule. So it does not, just to repeat, really important point, it does not overwhelm your baby's immune system. You're just adding extra layers of protection, protection to that immune system. Right. So every day, a healthy baby's immune system successfully fights off thousands of germs. And so these vaccines give your child the antibodies they need to fight off serious vaccine preventable diseases. Um, my toddler is officially way behind on vaccines because of the pandemic. How do I get caught up? Like, do I have to start all over again? You don't need to start all over again, but you'll work with your, your pediatrician, with your healthcare provider to um, find out how to catch up on those vaccines. And so the important thing to do is start now so that you can start getting that protection from those vaccinations. So there's always a way to play catch up, correct? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, great. Is it normal, you know, talking about reactions to vaccines, because a lot of parents worry about that, um, you know, to start with, they're not super psyched about a needle coming towards their baby's tender skin. Um, but that pain is momentary. What about afterwards? What, what kinds of um, reactions are normal? And what should we be concerned about? So children can have mild reactions from shots. So pain at the injection site or a rash or a fever. And these are pretty normal uh, reactions and they'll go away soon. It is important though, probably to pay extra attention to your child for a few days after they get their vaccines. And if something's really concerning, call your child's doctor. So are, are reactions more likely the first round of vaccines or do they become um exponentially more likely as you get more in the series? There's not really more or less, but you can have these mild reactions every time you get a vaccine. I know uh, many of the moms were concerned about their baby getting a fever. Mm -hmm. um, what, what would you say is a concerning fever and what would you say, and how long should you anticipate the fever lasting? 
So you can get a fever in those first couple of days, you can get a rash. Um, but again, you know, parents know their babies too. So if they're paying attention and they're concerned, that's what your doctor's there for and to call the doctor and, and ask that advice. But do expect a little bit of some of these mild reactions, the soreness, the fussiness, the low grade fevers. What about sleepiness? Sleepiness is also a really common side effect with routine childhood vaccinations. So that is something that you certainly could see in those, those first couple of days. And would it be, when would you expect to see the fever from a vaccine? Like I know with the MMR, sometimes it's a slightly delayed reaction. Right. You can see um, that, that fever, you know, sort of right away, or you may see it a, a few days later. Um, but that certainly, um, you know, something that you can see, you can treat that um, with Tylenol if you... Um, you know, if it seems to be bothering the child, mm -hmm. um, but also talking to your doctor about using a pain reliever or fever reducer would be really important. And I guess it's also really important to remember that, you know, just as with, with say when a baby's teething and they get diarrhea or a baby's teething and gets a, a, a low grade fever, you can't always assume it's because of the vaccine or because of the teething. But if you have a concerning symptom, you always want to make sure it's normal and check with the pediatrician. Absolutely. So that's why that that's why you formed that relationship and, and have gone go to well child visits so that you have someone that can be that expert for you and your family and your child. Um, parents also wonder if they should give Tylenol uh, before shots or should they wait until and see if a baby actually gets a reaction. So it's not recommended to give pain relievers before vaccination. After the shot, you know, following your doctor's advice, you can give um, something like Tylenol or, or a non-aspirin uh, pain reliever and can take other steps um, at home to comfort your child, but I wouldn't give that prior to the vaccinations. Great. Good to know. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Peacock. And I'm hoping we all get caught up on our vaccines as soon as possible. Thanks so much. Thank you.